I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just so hungry. Um, <laughs> the best part of the day. In fact, the best part of my trip was meeting the president of ATU Local 1090 or 1080 um, in Beaumont, Texas, President Arlen Jackson. He came up to me. <laughs> I didn't know who he was, you know, but he came up to me and he's like, hey, brother Eric, I was, you know, thanks for speaking up and this and that. And, um, you know, I really like what you said and, you know, need more people to speak up. And I was like, oh, thanks, you know. He began to tell me about who he, he didn't even talk to me about who he was. We just talked. And, and what I do is I kind of let people talk and, I, and then we're like building on the conversation and all of a sudden, a long story short, <laughs> this is the brother who during the pandemic organized his coworkers to stop operating the machines and using the tools during the pandemic until the safety protocols were put in place with safe vehicles uh, and, and, and other, other protocols. They stopped. And they got what they wanted. They even got new buses with brand new types of shields with fans in them that like blow the air out of the... I mean, this brother was so inspirational. And he's, you know, he's got a small local and everything he did was what we in Transit Workers Unite and the Justice Coalition were trying to do in February and March of 2020. And of course we failed because Franklin and Hill didn't want to go along with anything we had to say to help the members because they said the CTA was gonna take care of us. And they certainly did. <laughs> but if, if you can imagine, if you're not getting what the members, if the members aren't getting what they want, if you talk to the members, they want this, they want that, and they're not getting it, and you tell the employer, Okay, well, it's too, it's too dangerous. So we're going to stay home until it's safer at work. That is power. That is power. And that's bravery. And to meet this brother, and I, I actually had written about him a couple years ago, about that local, to try to tell the union, our union members and officers that the only people that got anything were the people that stopped work. That's it. So, um, I just, and it's so disappointing though that, that it was just him and the ATU International just kind of just sat back and did nothing. But I tell you, I met this brother and made my day. To know that there's people that have done things like that is powerful. It's powerful. Very. And you'd never know. He's not arrogant at all. He's, he's not a know-it-all. He was asking me questions. <laughs> like, you asking the red line rookie? <laughs> okay, let me give you an... Let me grab my book here and try to answer. But anyways, that was a really great meeting. And I met a whole lot of people, you know, after speaking, you know, speaking up for you guys um, and myself, basically. Um... But especially for you all, um, it attracted a lot of people of like mind. And I was so glad to meet people that actually thought like I do, who, who, who believe in democracy. And they basically cried about talking about it with me after that first session, you know, to watch them just destroy it. So uh, um, made some really good contacts. And hopefully these are people that we can inspire. Because in Chicago, let me tell y'all, in Chicago, well, what y'all are doing, starting to speak up, you, you know, we're organizing, we're doing protests and stuff like that. 
you guys are inspiring other members, okay? So Local 308, Local 241, I ain't talking about the officials. They are not the union. I'm talking about the workers. The little stuff that y'all do with us in the Justice Coalition and things you're doing on your own, you're inspiring other locals in uh, North America. And uh, they are inspiring me. <laughs> and I wish you were here to meet this brother um, and to listen to his story. Maybe one day. That's it. Sorry I left this one out. <laughs>